traditionally the treatment of uh, salivary gland disorders has largely required open surgery. Um, some of the common things that can cause problems with saliva glands include stones or scar tissue, both of which can block the gland and cause the gland to swell and cause significant pain. So most patients that I see have for a number of months or even years, every time they eat a meal, will have their gland swell up. About 10 years ago, some centers in Europe developed uh, some small scopes that actually allow you to go up into the natural opening of the salivary glands in the mouth and actually go up into the gland and relieve blockages. We're currently the busiest endoscopic salivary gland center in the United States. We've treated um, patients from 16 different states in the District of Columbia. Patients have come from as far away as Oregon, New Mexico, Colorado, and Arizona. Now that we've done over 200 cases here, we've gotten very, um, I think, very successful at it. Okay. Um, and, uh, you know, we're now also a training center for the technique. So right now there's not all that many surgeons in the United States trained uh, to do this, but we have had three courses here where we've trained over 60 surgeons from the United States, uh, Latin America, and Canada. How common is this? It occurs in about 1 in 10,000 people per year. It's not a lethal disorder, but right. it certainly can lead to some significant infections uh, of the salivary glands, and if not uh, detected early, these infections can spread throughout the neck, and in those cases it can be uh, life-threatening. Uh, symptoms are sw swelling of the gland, uh, of the, so swelling of the glands of the cheeks, swelling of the glands underneath the jawline. Uh, usually when eating or eating something sour that causes a lot of uh, saliva, mm -hmm. um, the people will experience the swelling. Discomfort, uh, tenderness over the glands. You know, the traditional treatment, the open surgery, often would require a two to three hour operation. Uh, and usually one to two days in the hospital. Uh, this procedure can usually be done under an hour um, and on an outpatient basis. In the procedure, what we, we do is uh, we, we start by identifying the natural opening of the gland. Uh, we pass a series of dilators to uh, open that opening uh, into the gland and then we pass, uh, we start with a small diagnostic scope that goes in, this scope's only 0.8 millimeters in diameter. Say, it really it's very tiny. small, 0.8 millimeters. It's not a uh, lethal disorder, it's a very aggravating disorder that affects people's quality of life and uh, patients have been offered the open surgery and been told of the risk to the nerve that moves the face and uh, other nerves that, give, that move the tongue or give sensation to the tongue and uh, they're worried about taking that risk. Generally the way we have it set up is that um, I see the patients for the first time on Monday afternoon do their preoperative examination and physical and then we do the procedure on Tuesday and then they go home. Uh, they don't come back, they either uh, call me or send me an email three or four weeks down the road to let me know how they're doing. But other than that, that's it. Most come in the weekend before and enjoy Charleston for a few days and then uh, make it then to the have, destination. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Anytime you have a service in your department that has a national reputation and which this service does, uh, I think that it improves the profile of your department.